If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own first before listening on. We've gone ahead and drawn a ramp that makes a 30 degree angle with the horizontal. And then we've represented the box by this red dot in the center of a free body diagram. And in that free body diagram, we have shown the forces that are acting on the block as it slides down the incline. Of course, we have the gravitational force that's pointing straight down. We have the surface of the ramp that's pushing up on the block, and that is known as the normal force. Note that the normal force makes a 90 degree angle with the surface of the ramp. And then we have the kinetic frictional force. We have pointed that force up the ramp because as the block slides down the ramp in this direction, the friction force will tend to oppose that motion. And so it's going to be pointing in the opposite direction and therefore it will be pointing up the ramp. Moving to part A, in order to calculate the work that is done by the force of gravity in this situation, what we need to do is look at the equation that gives us the work done by a force. And here is that equation. It tells us that to calculate the work, we multiply the magnitude of the force times the cosine of an angle, which we will explain in just a moment, and then multiplied by the displacement magnitude. Now, for the angle, we need to note that that will always be measured between the direction of the force and the direction of the displacement. Let's not forget that the displacement vector would be pointing down the ramp in this problem because that is the direction that this block is traveling. So let's see if we can apply this equation to calculate the work done by the gravitational force. For the magnitude of the force F, we would plug in the magnitude of the gravitational force, which we noted was mg. And then we have the cosine of that angle times the magnitude of the displacement. We can go ahead and begin to fill in some of the known values. The mass was stated to be 5 kilograms. We'll just enter it in as 5 for the sake of clarity. g has a value of 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we're going to figure out what this angle is. Remember, it's between the force vector and the displacement vector. We can see the displacement vector is labeled in green, and we could actually slide it a little bit so that it would be located right here. So basically, the angle that we need would be between this green displacement vector and this red gravitational force vector. In other words, we need this angle right here. And one way of finding that would be to extend the gravitational force so that we form essentially a right triangle. And in order to see that right triangle, we can color it in. Now, because it's a right triangle, we know that this angle right here would be 90, which we can label. And if this angle is 90 and this angle over here is 30, then this angle would actually have to be 60 degrees because, of course, the three angles must add up to 180. So 60 degrees will be the angle that we will be plugging in for the calculation of work done by gravity. And then finally, we multiply by the magnitude of the displacement. And since the block is sliding two and a half meters down the ramp, we can just simply plug in the 2.5 meters. We'll pick up our calculator and plug this in. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. And when you do that, you should get 61.3. And then the standard unit of work will be joules. So this will be the correct answer to part A. We'll move on to part B and calculate the work done by the friction force using the same equation. So for the force of friction, we have it labeled Fk. And we're going to have to remember that Fk can be broken down further. And what we mean by that is that the kinetic frictional force, Fk, is going to equal the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force magnitude. And the challenge here becomes to find the value of this normal force magnitude. And to do that, it turns out that we have to take the gravitational force and break it into its y and x components. Let's imagine that there is a y-axis that is sort of superimposed on our diagram. So right here would be an imaginary y-axis, and then the x-axis would run parallel to the surface of the ramp, basically right about there. And Again, we're going to have to break the gravitational force into its y and x components. The y component of the gravitational force would be pointing in this direction, and then the x component would be pointing in this direction. What we want to notice is that this angle right here 
is actually going to be 30 degrees. And we know that because earlier we had figured out that this was 60 degrees. And in order to make the angle between the surface of the ramp and our y-axis equal 90 degrees, which indeed it is, this would have to be a 30 degree angle. We want to note that the y component is adjacent to this 30 degree angle. Since it's adjacent, we would use the cosine function to represent it. So this y component right here is going to be mg times the cosine of that angle. And the reason we want to define that is because the normal force vector, which is right here, is going to be equal in magnitude to this vector right here. We know they're equal in magnitude because the block is not accelerating either off the ramp in this direction or into the ramp in this direction. So those two forces must be balanced out. So in essence, the normal force is going to equal mg cosine of 30 degrees. So we're going to come into our equation and we're going to substitute for the normal force mg times the cosine of 30 degrees. And then we have the cosine of theta. Remember that theta is between the force and the displacement. And why don't we try to figure out what that angle is. Notice that the frictional force is pointing in this direction, the displacement is pointing down the ramp in the opposite direction. The angle between that frictional force and the displacement vector is this angle right here, and hopefully we can see that that's 180 degrees. So that's what we're going to be plugging in for the theta in our work equation. So let's begin to plug in the known values. The coefficient of kinetic friction was stated to be 0.436. We once again know the mass is 5, g is 9.8, and then again the second angle here will be 180. The displacement is still 2.5. And when you work that out you should get about negative 46.3 and then once again the unit will be joules. So this is the correct answer to part B. On to part C, the work done by the normal force. Remember we had concluded that the normal force was equal to mg times the cosine of 30 degrees. So that's what we're substituting in for the force. And then we get to cosine of theta. That's the angle between the normal force and the displacement. And hopefully we can see from the diagram that the angle between the normal force and this green displacement vector is simply 90 degrees. So we'll make sure we put in cosine of 90 here, and then we have the displacement. Let's go ahead and plug in the known values. And when you work this out, you actually should get zero joules, and that's because the cosine of 90 turns out to equal zero. So this entire expression becomes zero. And finally, part D, because the ramp would have the same vertical height, it turns out that the work done by gravity, which we can just call WG for now, will not change. And that's because you're spanning the same vertical height. As for the work done by the normal force, which we can just call Wn, that's still going to be equal zero joules. And the reason for that is because the angle between the normal force and the surface of the ramp is always going to be 90 degrees. So when we plug in 90, we know that the cosine of 90 is zero, and therefore the overall work done by the normal force will remain zero. As for the work done by the frictional force, we were told that the angle formed by the ramp will be steeper. So that means that theta in this equation right here would be increasing. And it turns out that if you increase the angle, the cosine of that angle actually decreases. And if that decreases, that means the work done by friction will also decrease. So we can conclude that fact for the work done by friction. So in summary, the work done by gravity won't change, the work done by friction will decrease, and the work done by the normal force will remain zero.